Good morning, class. Uh, this is Priyanka Pandey, and I am going to teach you civil science history chapter, Mughal military campaign, uh, class seven. So now I'll start with the chapter. Uh, firstly, I will will discuss uh, in detail about Akbar the Great. So, uh, so in the starting, uh, shortly after Himanshu uh, returned to Delhi after 15 years and re-establishing Mughal rule in India, he died in an accidental fall from his library. Akbar, his 13-year-old son was proclaimed the emperor. He ruled the Mughal Empire for the next 50 years, that is from uh, 1556 to 1605 CE, and established himself as the greatest ruler in the medieval India. So this is uh, how the rule of the Akbar started. Now we'll talk about the second battle of Panipat. The second battle of Panipat was fought between the forces of Samrat Hemchandra Vikramaditya and who was also called Hemu, the Hindu king, who was ruling the North India from Delhi and the army of Jalauddin Muhammad Akbar on November 5th, 1556. And from here, his reign is uh, uh, like started. Conquest of the Akbar. So we'll talk about uh, how Akbar establishes uh, uh, empire. So Akbar conquest of Akbar was largely successful, and his empire extended from Kabul in the west to the Bengal in the east, and from Kashmir in the north to the Vindhyas in the south. Akbar was an imperialist, and he frankly declared and desired to pursue the policy of extension of the empire. He, con he conquered the north, entire North India and consolidated it under his administration. Akbar engaged himself in wars of conquest all through his life and he initiated his conquest of southern India and partially succeeded before he died. So this is how he established his uh, um, reign, uh, the entire uh, uh, reign and extension of his empire. So now we'll talk about uh, his con conflict. So uh, in this slide, I'll uh, mainly discuss about the Rana Pratap Singh, contact with Rana Pratap Singh. The Ra Rajput of Mewar, however, refused to submit to the Akbar, having lost, uh, he already lost his Chittor, their capital city. So they rallied around Rana Pratap, uh, the valiant son of Udaya Singh. So after his escape to hills, Udaya Singh had built new capital called Udaipur. So uh, after Udaya Singh's death, Rana Pratap carried the struggle against the Mughals. And with the great difficulty, uh, Rana Pratap organized an army and chased the Mughal forces in the Battle of Haldi Ghati, that is in 17, uh, 1576. So um, this uh, uh, military was led by Rajput chief Raja uh, Man Singh of Akbar. So now, uh, after the conflict and everything, we'll uh, move to the administration of Akbar, how the administrative department works during the Akbar reign. So Akbar was successful administrator and the principle of its administrative policy was acceptable by everyone. So now the central administration of the Akbar is divided into uh, like four parts and it is a mixture of both Indian and Persian traditions. It um, consists of commander in chief of armed forces to the supreme judges on all matter of justice. So uh, the fourth division is Wazir or we call it Diwan, Revenue uh, Department, he handles uh, the Revenue Department. Mir Bakshi, it is a uh, title given to military uh, head of the Mansabdars. Kazi, Chief Judge and Chief Sub. Chief Sub, okay. So now this is the administration of Akbar at that period of time. Now we'll move to uh, the next slide, which is provincial administration. How uh, the administration of the province uh, work? It is divided into these uh, these given uh, uh, following uh, paths. That is Subhas, Sarkaras, Pranas, Village, and then the Panchayat. So uh, Subhas are handled by the Subdars or Diwan, and there is a Mansabdari system which is followed during that period of time. The Mansab, it is an Arabic word meaning rank or position or status. Thus, Mansabdari uh, was a system in which the rank of government official was determined. So every civil and military official was given a mansab and was called mansabdar. And there were two methods of making the payments to the nobles. First was giving them jagi land, okay, where they uh, they got their salaries. And the second was making cash payment. Okay. So the, in the mansabdari system, no jagis were granted. And the mansabdar got his salary from royal treasury. So this is how the provincial uh, administration work and the mansabdari system. I hope you all understand what is Mansabdari system. So Mansab is basically the revenue or the payment. 
so now how the revenue system like um, what uh, is the revenue system it is uh, revenue department is under the wazir or diwan see uh, or akbar added to the whole uh, old practices and procedures and tradition of sersha revenue system how that time work on uh, akbar uh, the held his meeting in diwane khas with their senior officers theek hai all the like important uh, matter uh, which he discussed over there so um, mansabdars were given uh, right to collect the major revenues and mughal state was essentially a revenue collecting state so um, there were different like silver rupee coin copper these are like silver rupee coins are mainly uh, 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 acceptable during the akbar reign and um, okay uh, this is how the revenue system work at that period of time now i'll move to the akbar religious policy akbar built a ibadat khan a, like hall of prayer in 1575 built at fatehpur shikri and he was interesting in learning about different religion uh, their religious practices and everything and he invited leaders from different faith to discuss their religious uh, and religion and how they practice those religion so he also declared issue declaration of war of mazhab which gave him power to choose different interpretation of islamic law so he like to hear from people or their opinion uh, on the religion also so um, now on the next slide i'll discuss about the social and cultural achievement akbar was against the sati and legalized widow remarriage uh, and he also raised the age of marriage of boys and girls which is for um, girls it is uh, 14 and for boys it is 16 he restricted the sale of wine and all the alcohol uh, thing alcoholic items he encouraged the study of astronomy mathematics logic and history Uh, he also uh, like um, revised the educational syllabus and laid more emphasis on moral education and secular uh, subjects rather than religion so he was like more uh, like uh, people should be inculcated with the uh, moral and ethics and akbar raised persian to the status of the state language which led to the growth of the literature so next we'll move to the slide of uh, nine gems of akbar court uh, As we all know that the these are called Navratnas. First is Abu Fazl, where he was a scholar, historian, and author of Akbar Nama and Aine Akbari. Second, I am going to tell you about the Fazi. He was a Persian poet laureate and a philosopher. So um, third is Abdul Rahim Khanek uh, Khanan. He was a Hindi poet and composer of duhas. Tanzan, we all know, is a singer and musician of extraordinary taste in music. Other mall, he was the Akbar brilliant revenue minister. He uh, handled the system of revenue. Birbal was Akbar constant companion, known for his intelligent mind and sharp wit. So uh, Raja Ram Mohan, as we all know, that his great military commander and trusted advisor of Akbar, Fakir Azizuddin, he was a mystic and a great advisor for Akbar. And lastly, Mulla Dhaf Yaza was a great scholar. He is known for his reading. um and these are the nine gems and for of the next i'll move to the you all can see the picture of noratnas where you go uh, where you can identify them and find them so this in this slide i am only going to tell you about akbar and his administration and then the next class we'll talk uh, more about mughal so thank you class uh, very much for attending thank you very much.